Hey, what's up everyone, Jeremy here, and it seems that a lot of people tend to mix up the different languages used to do different things on different platforms and technology, and I just wanted to clarify this a bit. You know, video games, websites, even databases all have different languages that they use. Certain ones use maybe a programming language, or a scripting language, or even a markup language. All different, and I'll explain these here accordingly. But i just like to add, you know, when I first started doing C and C++ back years ago, and HTML and learning the web, I found out that there were a lot of things kind of mixed together. You know, I didn't know whether Pascal or HTML or CSS, PHP, all these different languages, let alone Java and JavaScript, I didn't realize what they actually did. And it was kind of hard for me to understand, okay, well, these things do this, and these things can be used for multiple things, but only these things can be, you know, it just gets a little confusing and crazy. So I'm just going to clarify this the best I can, and we're going to start off with what's a programming language. What is a programming language? A programming language could more easily be identified universally pretty much by just a language that is used to transform data but they actually do so by sending instructions to the CPU that rewrite the input data into the output. Now, I might be getting a little bit hard to understand, and I, I promise I'm going to clarify a little bit more to try to instill the differences between these. Let me show you. You know, I'm going to give you an example of a really simple programming language. This is C++, and all this program does is calls a library and using a specific namespace it'll begin the program with the main integer and spews out this simple text which is pretty much i want to output this text right here learn programming languages bro and inline and then this will return nothing which will then subsequently end our program. Now this is the simplest of simple programs. I actually just modified a hello world program if you're familiar with one of those, but once you create your code, you would actually have to build this code together. So it would actually make a program that would run and display this or whatever functions that you put inside of your main integer. But yeah, anyways, off of C++, this is just one of many programming languages, and I just wanted to give you an example on how a programming language works. So that's a programming language. Now, moving on to a scripting language, and we're just going to brush over this one. A scripting language, and you're going to hear people argue about this one, but it's a programming language, and the use of each language varies. So anyways, let me just give you a quick example of a script language. Right here is JavaScript, and... This is one of the most popular script languages there are. And all this does is add certain functionality that you might be looking for. Maybe it's a screen scroll or possibly a slideshow. Um, there could be many different transitional elements that JavaScript could be used for. Another example of a scripting language would be PHP, you know, used for maybe making forms, you know, so people can contact you. Um, like I have a contact form on my the bottom of my main website. Right here. And this would be used with PHP helping out. And let me just add, when it comes to scripting languages, or when it comes to programming languages, things always change. What could be a, strictly a scripting language could potentially be a full-fledged programming language the next day. It just depends on how it's used and what's implemented into it. You know, an example of this is Ruby, which initially was just a scripting language. They now have more than just one compiler for it, so it's now a programming language, and it's a very popular one at that. Programming languages used in a video game can potentially vary a little bit, but when it comes to certain platforms or consoles and devices, they tend to stick with the same ones. What I mean by that is console gaming like PS4 and Xbox 360 and the Xbox One typically use pretty much only C++ for the main part of the programming. Now there are exceptions of course with anything, and C Sharp has been known to do some work on console games, but really it just comes down to what engine that company and that game is using. With how fast and stable C++ is, pretty much nothing touches it. So 
That might change in the future, but for now, I don't see in that changing for a while for console gaming. But mobile games are a bit different, however. Android has been known to pretty much just use Java. Not JavaScript, Java. And however, C and C++ can be used instead, although Google does not recommend it. It seems like they're not going to make that change really over to C++. So that's where Android sits. iPhones, iPads, and really all Apple handhelds are a little bit different. And they run on Objective-C, which basically is just a beefed up version of C. So that's pretty much how gaming sits. Now, websites, on the other hand, use a much larger scale of languages. For instance, hypertext markup language, HTML for short, is for structuring data. It's cascading style sheets is used for styling the website. Colors, font, borders, spacing, etc. Now, hypertext preprocessor, which is PHP, and I know you would think it would be HP or maybe even HPP, not HPV, HPP. However, the naming convention for this language is actually what's known as a recursive backronym. Now, the reason for this is PHP originally actually stood for personal homepage, but yeah, things change when things get popular, I guess. Now, there are potentially many other languages that could be used for a website, but that's at least, you know, some of them explained out a bit for you. The great thing, though, about the next thing I'm going to mention, Structured Query Language, which is SQL for short. This language actually allows you to send data to and from your database. And for instance, you know, retrieving a username and password so you can have a membership site of some sort, or perhaps, you know, all the comments that you have from people commenting on your blog or your website or your forum posts, or I can go on. These all would be stored in your database. But hey, hopefully you learned a little bit about these three different kinds of languages and how these languages run the technology around us. Now, if anybody needs any more help with either programming languages or scripting languages and you would like further information or a more in-depth tutorial on this, just let me know. I'm already going to be doing a bunch of stuff on markup languages, so I wouldn't worry about that. So yeah, thanks for watching and click that red button down below and please subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment down below as I mentioned if you have any questions on this or further suggestions you might have on tutorials or anything. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.